All right, so welcome back to another video. So today what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna give you my advice on which one to use, a birdie ball or a foam ball in your backyard whenever you can make it to the range because you don't wanna drive far or just because you wanna save money maybe or for whatever the reason is, you wanna maybe just train at home, get some practice. I'm gonna tell you a few things based on my experience that can help you and some things that are maybe not so good with, the, uh, with this training ball. So stay tuned. Okay, so the balls that I'm talking about is uh, this birdie ball, which is a little heavier, and the foam ball, which is very light. There's also other uh, balls that you can use, but I'm gonna just review this too. Well, let me start with uh, the birdie ball right here, um, which is, it depends on how much space you have in your back here. I have the 55 yard over there, uh, Mark, which is a 50 meter, so it's about 55 yards. So with the birdie ball, uh, you're gonna get a little more distance. So you have to make sure that you have an, enough space. Otherwise, you're gonna get into your neighbor. Now, the feel with a berry ball is a little heavier. So uh, you're gonna have better, better contact, I would say. Um, it's not gonna be as a real ball, obviously, but the contact is gonna feel much better than the foam ball. So let me show you, with a 52, the distance that you get with a uh, berry ball, full swing, Okay, so that goes about 20 yards. Now with the foam ball, uh, same club, the distance that you get, let's see. Okay, so that goes about 10 yards. Now the feel uh, obviously uh, is better with the birdie ball, I would say. But the ball flight, they're both good. Okay, so in my opinion, if you're just looking for ball flight, you can use the foam ball, it's fine. You can, um, maybe if you're practicing a golf net and you wanna know exactly if you're drawing or fading, then the, the uh, foam ball is fine. But the only problem with the foam ball is that because you're not gonna feel the impact, you, you may in the long term develop some problems, I would say. Now, recently one of my subscribers, he said that he developed some problems playing with really light balls and he switched to the, that's why he switched to the birdie ball. And with this, he didn't have that problem. And what I can say about that is that I'm, you know, I, I played a lot with foam balls in the past. And to be honest, I think there is some truth in that because since you're not have even a sound when you're hitting the ball, then if you're, especially if you want to hit right after the ball like this, and there's no impact, that could in the long term not be good for you. But Again, if you're just hitting a few balls just to see your ball flight, I don't think any, there's gonna be any harm in that. So with a 52, it went about 20 yards. I'm gonna try the, my pitching wedge now and see how far it goes with the birdie ball. Okay, that was a pretty good shot. It went a little longer. So I would say about 30, 30 yards. Now I'm gonna try the foam ball. Okay, so the foam ball is still about the same, maybe just a little longer with the pitching wedge. So it's about 55 yards to there, so over here you're still about 30 yards or not even 25. So after your pitching wedge, if you have a garden or a backyard with just uh, 25 yards, you're good with this. Apart from the shape, which is a little weird, uh, I gotta tell you that you do feel the impact. So it's not gonna be like a real ball, obviously, but you do feel an impact, so you can work a lot on your release. Whereas with the uh, with the foam ball, you're not you're not gonna feel the impact. So it's gonna if you're doing repetitive uh, swings, it might not be a good idea because you're not gonna feel whether you hit before or after the ball. Now I have my longest iron in my bag, which is a five iron, and I'm gonna see if I'm gonna pass the 50 yard uh, mark. So okay, this is pretty good, and stay a little short of the 50 so let me try the uh, the foam ball yeah and again uh, with the foam ball I have to I have to be honest now um, after hitting the birdie ball it, it you can feel you, you just it's just very difficult to feel the impact okay so the birdie ball is here and there's the 55 yard marker so 
I did not pass the 55 yard uh, marker. So if you have a backyard that is this big, uh, definitely you can uh, practice with uh, birdie balls. But um, a lot of people maybe don't have those big backyards. So in my opinion, it'd be better uh, to practice with, uh, with the birdie ball, but just use it like up to your, you know, pitching wedge or nine iron. Okay, and the foam ball stayed here. So it's about 20 yards at the most. It's not gonna go more than 20 yards. So if you have a small backyard, you're probably better off with the foam balls. But again, you have to be careful about the contact because if you don't feel the contact, it's going to be very difficult to know whether you hit him before or after the ball. And in the long term, it may be a problem. Okay, so after hitting uh, a few balls, uh, birdie ball, foam ball, uh, you can definitely work the birdie ball and the foam ball as well, but the difference is huge. I never noticed this until now because I normally just uh, maybe pick up a few foam balls and just try to see ball flight and that's it. But I never actually compare them. And I tell you what, now that I have done so, uh, there is a difference. I mean, the difference is huge. Uh, the birdie ball is not, it's not like a real ball, but it's very close to it. The feel is definitely, uh, you definitely feel the, the, the impact through the ball. So I would say, in my opinion, it's gonna be uh, better to practice with a birdie ball or something heavier. So I hit a few five irons and I never passed the 55 mark uh, with the birdie ball. Uh, obviously that depends on my swing. I can uh, normally carry 180 with my five irons. So if you can carry more than that, then probably you're gonna pass the 50 yard mark. But again, uh, it's, a, it's a very long distance um, for a backyard, I'm assuming. So you definitely have to have some space. I think foam balls could be used if you're just uh, working on some kind of swing changes where you don't really care where the ball goes. You're just trying to ingrain that, that, uh, the move. Maybe you can use that, but and I have to say, after doing this review, I'm convinced that um, foam balls may not be that good for you. Um, and I hate to say it because uh, I'm one who practice a lot with foam balls, but after testing out with a, with a heavier ball, it's, uh, it's a big difference. Now, obviously there's also other options like the uh, almost golf balls or the 30% golf balls. So you may want to try those, but those go farther than 50 yards. So that's, that's a problem. But one more thing that you want to consider with the birdie ball and the foam ball is that they are affected by wind. So if it's windy in one direction, you have to be careful because you're going to add an extra 10 yards to it. So that could be a difference uh, between staying in your backyard and going to the neighbor which you probably don't want to do. Okay guys, so I hope you liked the review, the comparison I did between the birdie ball and the foam ball. Uh, don't get me wrong because I, I used to, uh, or I still use uh, foam balls to this day. Uh, I don't think they're bad, but uh, it depends on what you're working on. You just have to be careful not to overuse them, maybe for long periods of time because you might develop a swing flaw on your contact and follow through. Whereas definitely with the birdie ball, it's not, you're not gonna have that problem. I'm not responsible for them in any way, so, uh, but definitely if, you, if you're looking for something to practice in your backyard, uh, the birdie ball is definitely a good option, uh, granted that you have the space. Hope you like the review, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time.